Happy Memorial Day, folks. Make sure you're spending time with the family. And if you have had individuals in your family that are veterans that did, unfortunately, gave the ultimate sacrifice, make sure you think about them and tell your kids about the sacrifice that they has done. That's what this is all about on today's Memorial Day. So it's the, about the people that fallen and given their lives up for our country. Show them some love to the family members and remember those who did the ultimate sacrifice. On today's show, we're talking about Brian Branch. We're going to give you an update on what occurred with him in the surgery. Should the Lions bring in Ryan Tannehill? Well, an article believes we should. JMO having a breakout season. Looks like he's doing pretty good in OTAs. We're going to talk about that. OTA risers. Who is looking good in OTAs and strengths and weaknesses to the Lions offense? Without further ado, let's get this thing started right now. We're going to start with here about Brian Branch. I just want to do a quick update. Just so you don't know, he had a little cleanup there. Lions coach Dan Campbell said via Dave Burkett. Something that is coming out last year, though, it would have healed and then ended up being, so you know, we better get the thing done. So anyways, that's where he's at. That, and I think that he is riding the scooter. But we like he's progressing well. We feel like he'll be ready to go in camp. If not early enough, certainly he'll get reps and ready for the season. That's how we feel about it right now. So there was a little bit of concern about Brian Branch and, and his surgery. But like I've been saying for for some time, you really don't, don't have to worry about it. I think that everything is going to be perfectly fine regarding Brian Branch. Now, we heard that last year with Emmanuel Mosley, and then it kept lingering on. But Brian Branch was just a small cleanup, folks. It was nothing that big of a deal, and he'll definitely be good to go for training camp as I've had multiple cleanups, and it's nothing like reconstructive surgery or anything like that. So he'll get some rest. He'll be good to go for training camp. And uh, we are going to go for the up-and-coming season. But are you concerned about Brian Branch's surgery? Why for yes and N for no? Let us know in the comments below. Next article is talking about the Lions should be signing Ryan Tannehill, quarterback from the Tennessee Titans, as he is a free agent. Says so well in the NFC North, the Lions would be handling the offense over to second-year player Hendon Hooker. If Jared Goff were to be injured, bound times that Hooker, Spent most of his rookie season rehabbing to torn ACL, so it makes sense for the Lions to bring in more experienced passer than Jared for Jared Goff behind him. What did Ryan Hand Tannehill do this past season? Not a whole lot here. 1,606 yards, completion of 64.8, four touchdowns, three interceptions. Last couple of years, he had 2.5 thousand yards in 22. 13 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. In 21, nearly 4,000 yards, 21 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. And in 20, nearly 4,000 yards, 33 touchdowns. So his production each year has gotten worse and worse and worse. Is that something that you want behind Jared Goff? No. Why? Folks, Hennon Hooker is a good quarterback. He's going to be a good backup quarterback. He's cheap. And inexpensive. If Jared Goff goes down, Hennon Hooker is going to give you the best chance to win besides someone else who we're talking about like a backup quarterback situation that is much different than the Detroit Lions, right? You got the Aaron Rodgers situation over there. If they lose the quarterback, to me, it is a big step down. But Jared Goff has Hennon Hooker. Hennon Hooker is a good quarterback. He would have been a first-round pick. You know, in the draft last year, in my opinion, if he wasn't injured. And he's doing pretty decent so far in OTAs. Now, there's been reports of him having sporadic where it's up and down. Well, yeah, that's what it's going to be. But you're seeing his arm talent. You're seeing his strength. He's got more time to develop, really start to practice. Because last year, he didn't practice in training camp due to injury. And he got activated late in the season. Now, he has all training camp. Time to get acclimated with his receivers. And he's a cheap backup, and he's a good backup. He's better than Ryan Tannehill, in my opinion. Doesn't make much sense, if you ask me. There are players that are doing good so far in OTAs, and we're going to talk about them right now. And the first one here is Jamison Williams so far doing really good for the Detroit Lions. Really good. So far, he's been a breakout in OTAs, and he's getting it done. 
the way we want him to get it done, right? You you, you got to go in there and be physical. You have to be strong. You have to open up the holes, even as a, a runner, as a, as a wide receiver, help open up the holes. You got to be catching the football pretty damn hard and physical. Look at it, St. Brown. He's very physical as a wide receiver, trying to, you know, be his game top of every level, and that's what they want here in Detroit. And Jamison Williams is doing that. He showed physicality last year, and now he's doing great in OTAs, and we see at the end of the season, he was a contributor. So the Detroit Lions are pretty good at wide receiver, and I think that Jamison Williams is going to have a breakout year this up-and-coming season. So question for you, will Jamison Williams have a breakout year? What do you guys think? Why for yes and for no? Let us know. Other breakout players that they had so far in OTAs that were doing really good, Michael Badgley, he's kicked everything in the field goal. He's getting it done. He kicked the 60-yarder. Michael Badgley was looking pretty good about the Detroit Lions so far with the kicker position, but still fully expect the Lions to go ahead and probably bring in Jake Bates when he can be signed. Hen and Hooker was used fun watching, slinging the team, setting up very nice for the first time. Really had nice touches on the ball. Good velocity. One of his best plays were the deep down to Darius Fountain at oohs and ahs from the team. Reminder, this is just OTAs, though. But so far, he's doing good, so good. Look, he's made he missed some throws, and that's going to happen for any young quarterback who's never really had experience with wide receivers, but he's looking good. Jack Campbell looking really good. England said that the second-tier linebacker has grown as a man, has really taken control of this offseason, and he's taking control of it. He said he is a true Mike Backer and has been impressed with the Iowa product. We fully expected, right, he's going to take a jump. Sometimes players take a little bit more longer to develop, and we saw what happened when Jack Campbell was in place of Alex Anzalone last year. New Orleans Saints, he did a really good job. So nothing strange there. Terry and Arnold is looking great. He's running with the ones opposite of Carlton Davis. More importantly, you also know that Arnold is getting challenged much, and that's a good sign the rookie is acclimated pretty well. That's what good old Tim 20 man said. And he's correct. He's doing well. And he, he said fluid hips, staying with the receivers, is everything that we thought he would be. The most improved person right now in OTAs is Broderick Martin. He's getting better in shape. It's apparent that the Lions are starting, sharing photos of the offseason workouts. However, Glenn confirmed that Martin has adjusted his body to the NFL defensive lineman, but cautioned that we won't know how he is until the pads come on, and that's what we've been saying on here. We won't know until the pads come on with these players. Right, the defensive line, you got to have the pads. You have to be able to beat the linemen. You can look good all you want but you have to now do it on the field and on the practice field. Now, in all honesty, I think he's going to do a significant improvement. I don't know how much, but clearly he knew he had work to do after last year because he barely played. He took it, took the whatever he was taking and got in better shape, and he's doing great. Really good for him. Talk about this article, talking about the concern level of each position for the Lions offense here. Let's talk about it. And this was done by Sporting News Ranking, and he has the quarterback position super low. Clearly, we don't have a problem at the quarterback position. Jared Goff, good to go. He does what he does. He's a starting quarterback, just got a big old paycheck. Took the lines of the NFC Championship. Hennon Hooker, hell of a backup. Absolutely love having him backup. Good player, cheap, 100%. The quarterback position is low. You got Nate Sudfield as a number three or practice squad guy. Not too worried about him. So the lines are looking pretty good at some of these positions here and getting it done for sure the way that it should be. So I'm pretty happy about this position at the quarterback position. What do you guys think? Question for you. Pick a Lions concern. Right now, I think it's... E is, is one of the bigger concerns and and for edge and W for wide receiver. 
Number three, even though I don't think it's a gigantic concern, it's a little bit of a concern. What do you think is more important? Let me know in the comments below. Again, running back room, none. I absolutely agree. You have the best two running backs in football, and your backup three, Craig Reynolds, and, and, and four, Cyan Vaki, is good. Zero concern level about the running back, and I agree. Wide receiver, medium, I think that's where I would have it as well. Right? We'd, we're trying to see who's going to take over that number three, and we will Jameson Williams step up? I think he will. But you're just going to see Clee Freeman, Donovan Peoples-Jones in replace of Josh Reynolds. Tight end low. I would put no concern, honestly, for me. Sam Laporta, good number one, right? Brock, Brock Wright, good number two. I You could do Shane Zilster, James, uh, James, whoever. You know, it, 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 I, I'm not too concerned about the tight end there. Mitchell, he's got to step up. That's really about it. Offensive line, I would put non-existent. I actually like the backups tackle and both tackles they got Skip and Gino Vani Manu I like them love the backup guards and clearly the offensive line is best of football starting and that's what they got for the rankings right there and I agree with these rankings pretty much I agree with it and I um, think the offense is good to go I don't think we got to worry too much about that uh, it's more of defense right that's something that we got to be worrying about on the edge position and can the guys that we picked up in the secondary step up? I think that's a little, that's about it. Other than that, this team is really good, and I think they're perfectly fine. And my concern level is not that high at all for offense or defense. They're both really good. Folks in the comments, make sure you let me know what do you have as concerns. Put questions in there. Comment, comment, comment. The more you comment, the better that the video gets pushed out. With that said, folks, adios.